Did Jesus appear in the Old Testament? Did he show up? That's what we're going to answer today. And we're going to uncover the mystery of Melchizedek. Now, this all goes back to something that Jesus said when he was on earth and he was teaching the people about who he was. And this is found in John chapter eight. In John chapter eight, you really get a great clue into if Jesus showed up in the Old Testament and where he might have showed up. So in John chapter eight, Jesus was in the temple courts and he was explaining to the people who he was. And the people, they began to argue with him because Jesus was claiming that God was his father and that he came down from heaven. And so the people, they got really angry and they really got angry when Jesus told them that he saw Abraham. Now that was crazy to them. Jesus was not only claiming that God was his father, but he was claiming that he met and saw Abraham. That was crazy to them because Abraham was on the earth more than 2,000 years before Jesus was even born. So check out what they said in John chapter 8, verse 56. Here's how the conversation went. Verse 56, your father, he's talking to the Jewish people. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. And then they responded, you're not even 50 years old and you've seen Abraham? And then when Jesus says this, this really sets him off. He says, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus was claiming not only did he see Abraham, but before Abraham even existed, Jesus existed. Jesus said that he saw Abraham. And when they got excited about that, he said, I existed before Abraham was even born. Now, this is huge because this verse right here gives us the biggest clue into where Jesus appeared in the Old Testament. If Jesus said that he saw Abraham, then we should find somewhere in the Bible, in the story of Abraham, where he came across a figure that could have been Christ. Right? You think so. If Jesus said that he saw Abraham, then in the story of Abraham, we should see someone who might have been Jesus. Well, there is a mysterious encounter that took place in the Abraham story in Genesis chapter 14. So in Genesis chapter 14, we learn that Abraham and his people, they were in battle and he recovered many of his possessions that were taken from his people. And as Abraham was returning from battle, he met someone who was very interesting on his journey. So Abraham had just got finished defeating some people in battle, in battle. And as he was returning from his battle, he ended up meeting someone who basically just came out of nowhere. He meets someone who is referred to as the king of Shalem. <laughs> and this guy's name that he meets is Melchizedek. So let's take a look at this encounter because it's a very unusual encounter. So Genesis chapter 14, verse uh, 18. So, Abra so after Abraham returned from defeating this guy, then Melchizedek, the king of Shalem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of God most high. And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. Okay. So this is pretty important. He meets this guy named Melchizedek, the king of Shalem, and he brings out bread and wine. And it says this guy was a priest of God. Interesting. Now, here's why it's interesting, because there are three things about this that are huge clues into this identity of Melchizedek. Number one, it says he was the king of Shalem. So we're going to have to unpack that. Number two. He had bread and wine with Abraham. 
basically it sounds like he had communion with him. Bread and wine, okay? <laughs> and number three, it says that he was the priest of God, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. In the scripture, all of God's priests were never kings. In fact, there is only one individual who ever in the Old Testament and New Testament was referred to as being both a king and a priest. And that is the Messiah. And here we see that Melchizedek is a king and a priest. <laughs> okay. Look at... um. Psalms 110. In Psalms 110 verse 4, it says that the Messiah um, will be a priest. It says the Lord has sworn it will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So it's talking about the Messiah. It says the Messiah will be a priest. And we know that the Messiah will be a king also because in Zechariah chapter 6, it reads in verse 13, it is he, the Messiah, who will build the temple of the Lord and he will be clothed with majesty and he will sit and rule on his throne. So he's obviously a king and he will be priest on his throne. So the Messiah is the only person in scripture referred to as being both a priest and a king. Okay. And again, we know the Messiah is a king. I just want you to see the picture of the Messiah in the scripture. The Messiah is a king also. You see that clearly in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 when it talks about the really the incarnation when Jesus was born. It says, for, uh, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, and, he, and the government will be on his shoulders. What is that government? The kingdom of God. And the greatness of his government, the kingdom, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne. So it was a clear thing that the only person in scripture that is said to be king and priest is a Messiah. And so that's why it's so amazing that we see that Abraham meets this mysterious figure who just kind of shows up out of nowhere, has communion with the guy, and is referred to as being a king and a priest. Now, it's said that Melchizedek was the king of Shalem. <laughs> now, all right, this is, this is neat too. It says that he was the king of Shalem. It's a description. Let's take a look at it. You look at the Hebrew for the word shalem, it is the word peace. Shalem equals peace. In essence, it's not saying <laughs> that Melchizedek was the king of a location, the king of a place. It was saying that Melchizedek was the king of peace because this word in Hebrew means peace. So Melchizedek, wait, okay, Melchizedek, he has communion, he is a king and a priest, and he's referred to as the king of peace. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is, there is only one other person in the Bible who is referred to as the king of peace. And that's the Messiah. Isaiah 9, 6. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, it says Prince, but a prince basically turns into a king, the royalty. So, Prince of Peace. The parallel is so strong with this one. <laughs> okay, so, you may be thinking, wow. Okay, it sounds like if Jesus showed up anywhere in the Old Testament, this Melchizedek guy has to be the one, okay? I mean, Jesus said that he saw Abraham, and here's the guy who met Abraham, who had communion with Abraham, who is the king of peace, and a king and a high priest like the Messiah is said to be. And that's not all. We have to look at a vital chapter in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, because this really seals the deal on this whole thing. Ooh, I'm getting nervous, getting excited here. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 7. But first, let's look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. It says, Jesus has entered on our behalf, and he, Jesus, Jesus has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So here's Hebrews chapter 7. And as you know, the book of Hebrews is in the New Testament. Some people think it was written by Paul. Some don't believe that, but here, 
it examines the mystery of Melchizedek. So let's look at what it says. It says, this Melchizedek was king of Shalem and priest of God most high. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Now he's going to break it down now. So first, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. <laughs> and then also, king of Shalem means king of peace. Okay, so first of all, Melchizedek, that's not even a name. Abraham met a guy who his name wasn't Melchizedek, but Melchizedek is a description. So basically, Abraham mysteriously meets this guy who is the king of righteousness, and he is also the king of peace. And it says further, and this guy was without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life. It says Melchizedek had no father or mother. He had no genealogy. He had no beginning of days or end of life. And he resembled the son of God. He remains a priest forever. Wow. Abraham meets a guy who is the king of righteousness, the king of peace. And this guy has no father or mother without the genealogy. And he has without beginning of days or ends of life. It sounds like if Jesus had to show up in the Old Testament, there it is. Now, it says that he resembled the son of God. Let's unpack that because that's deep right there in itself. So we're going to go to tools. He had no beginning of days nor end of life, but he was made like the son of God. And the Greek word for that is aphomoyao. And basically that means to be a model or a copy of something. So basically, Melchizedek was another copy or model of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was born through Mary and he always existed even before he was born through Mary. And he showed up to meet Abraham in the form of Melchizedek. Man, that's it's, it's amazing. You see, the writers of the Bible, a lot of times they don't just come out and say stuff like this, but they always put the pieces there so that you can connect the dots. But it takes revelation. It takes seeking God and the Holy Spirit to reveal this stuff. The Bible will always give you the pieces and it lets you put it together, which really makes the journey even more exciting. So basically, we have it right there. Did Jesus show up in the Old Testament? Well, the biggest clue to that whole thing was when Jesus hinted at meeting Abraham. And when we see that Abraham met a guy whose name wasn't Melchizedek, he was the king of righteousness, the king of peace, who was a king and a high priest. And he had communion with the guy, you know, so it's pretty amazing. And it just goes to show just another glimpse of how deep God's word is and how, you know, the word of God is not just some Shakespearean historical text. It is deep. It has layers upon layers prophetic layers upon layers and this is just not even the tip of the iceberg there are so many things we're going to be un uncovering and getting into on this channel so all i can say is stay tuned let those you know in on this stuff because we're going to be uncovering some things that really will just take your faith to another level <laughs> you'll be moving some mountains i can say that much so join in on the conversation. We got comments right below and share your insights. You know, I'm interested in what you think about this. The Bible is so deep. And um, if you would like to get a link to the spiritual growth documents that have a lot of prophetic parallels in there, a lot of keys to living holy and righteously and living with purity, email me at jaron at aocnet.org and I will send you the link to those free documents. And again, we can always connect on Facebook and um, we can have communication there and grow as a community. Love you guys and God bless. I'll see you next time.